few great men are born in this world. In London's Grosvenor Square, Britain honours the memory of one. Winston Churchill, who was his wartime contemporary, and Clement Attlee, who became the peacetime successor, join the nation's tribute to Franklin Delano Roosevelt, whose widow has come here to unveil our memorial to him. Dukes and duchesses, princes, peers of the realm, and the leaders of the nation crowd the square, which for five years was a square mile of America. Through the coming years, it will remain a corner of Britain that is forever American. As the king and queen step onto the platform to lead the memorial ceremony, the crowd joins the St. Paul's choir in the president's favorite song. As the singing dies away, the king rises to speak for the nation. It is with both the pleasure and sadness that I welcome from Mrs. Roosevelt here today. I am shortly going to invite her to unveil as a monument to <coughs> her husband, the late president of the United States of America. He was one of the outstanding men of our time. And it was she who supported him through all of the trials which he had to face. It is fitting that Mr. Roosevelt's statue should overlook the square, which was the nerve center of the prodigious American war effort in Britain and in Europe. We shall, as we look at it, renew our pledge to continue to share with that people the ideals of peace and freedom for which President Roosevelt strove with such untiring faith. The King accompanies Mrs. Roosevelt as she walks to unveil her husband's statue. For Britain and the world, this third anniversary of the President's death is a day of sorrow and thankfulness. Sorrow because Franklin Roosevelt did not live to see the victory he had striven for. Thankfulness for having lived in the same era as a man who left the world a better place for his presence. As the American national anthem ends, the king steps forward to lay the first wreath, a personal tribute from the leader of one nation to another. Slowly, his majesty and the lonely, tall figure in black by his side walk back to the dais. The crowds in the square are silent as Ambassador Lewis Douglas speaks. Your Grace, Mrs. Roosevelt, Your Excellency, my lords, Ladies and gentlemen, for the courtesy your majesty has shown in honoring this historic occasion by your presence, for the sentiments which you have so generously expressed, I can do no more than extend in full measure the thanks of my country. That you have asked Mrs. Roosevelt to unveil this noble memorial statue of her husband reflects the delicate sense of the appropriate with which your people, the people of this sceptered isle, are so well endowed. 
May this memorial in this square be symbolic of a unity of purpose which no calumny can distort, no superficial difference can corrupt, and no prejudice can destroy. Proudly the old tune that FDR often sang wells out above the square, the battle hymn of the Republic. Contributed by the shillings and pence of ordinary Britons, this memorial expresses a people's tribute to one man. ends and a nation and its leaders remembers a lost friend. A few in Britain knew him personally, but his voice was familiar to millions. Best remembered of his sayings is one he made 15 years ago. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. That freedom from fear for which he worked and for which he died has not yet been achieved. May his spirit again guide the thoughts of the nations and may the memory of Franklin Roosevelt whose life shaped the destiny of our world, be forever an example to its people. <laughs>